I've been very happy with the reception of eighth grade, but part of the struggle of that is people can associate you only with that character. And yes, I do share a lot of qualities as Kayla, but it's hard because, uh, you know, people just, just want to cast you as like a shy little socially awkward kid when, you know, it's hard. It's hard being typecast, but, uh, it's also working with people, you know, even especially people I know who are like in a project and then I'm auditioning for it and I don't get it. And I'm like, Oh, that hurts. That burns. <laughs> it's interesting hearing about the the idea of people sort of wanting to cast you in the same role. I feel like that's something that a lot of actors experience or a same type of role. Mm. Uh, and it makes sense because it's like, oh, they see that, well, this is what she she did so beautifully. And it's it, it, it I understand why they would want that. But it's interesting to hear from your point of like, but there's other things that you know you can do and there's other characters that you can service well. What are, what are the, the types of characters that you're most interested in playing now? Like today, what would your dream type of role be? Oh, I don't know. It's such a hard question for me because I feel so interested in so many different kinds of projects, I guess. But I don't know, just the complete opposite of what people think of as me. You know, I think that's another thing, too, that comes with acting in the industry so young is you change day to day you know i i know i do at least so it's really hard when you you know uh might have been one way when you did a role and now you feel like you can't even replicate that even if people want to cast you is that yeah so, yeah That's, yeah wow so i just I, you know i don't know i i just really want to explore a variety of things because i feel like i don't even know myself yet so I don't really know what I want in terms of acting, at least. <laughs> That's really smart. It almost sounds like the idea of kind of you personally, correct me if I'm wrong, but like outgrowing some aspects of characters that you've played previously. So then it's like, well, what do, what do you do when you're, you're grown and developed out of that sort of version of a character? And, and how do you evolve and find the next character that suits who you are today and who you are as a person now? Is that fair? Yeah, no, I think that's a completely fair assessment. And, you know, I, I mean, I, I feel like you probably have experience with that too, being so young in the industry. And it's, it's a struggle because, again, especially when you're an adolescent, like you don't, don't even know what you want and you can kind of get ping-ponged around um, through roles, which can be interesting. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I was fortunate and I, I got cast in Despicable Me when I was five years old. And that was a great thing. That was very fun. Uh, yeah, but that's been looming over me my whole life, which is very strange. Uh, and I get people even now thinking of me as that character. And I'm like, that's really cool. But I'm 17 now and I want to do something different. <laughs> I, yeah, I had, a, I had a, a, an adjacent experience where I played this character on sort of an adjacent but reverse experience where I played this character that was like very rebellious and like a juvenile delinquent and kind of a, like a badass. And I was raised Mormon and I was very like sensitive and very um, hyper anxious, like to where my voice was an octave higher than what I made it on TV. Like if my oh, character wow. like this, I was like, hi, like <laughs> scary difference and constantly being recognized for that role. And seeing people's disappointment when I wasn't that I wasn't cool. I was wearing clothes from the children's place. Like I was the furthest thing from that character and seeing just their reactions shift from like, Oh, you're you, you're not that was heartbreaking and also confusing because then I tried to overcompensate and be more like the character. So I was like, well, that's what people want. People want me to be that character all the time. So I'll just completely abandon myself and try and be that. And then just kind of realizing, well, where am I in this equation and getting to the bottom of like my identity in the midst of trying to overcompensate and be more like a character that people liked me for was really difficult. And something I don't even think I started to fully grasp until I quit acting a couple years ago and was able to go like, okay, well, who am I without being somebody else? Yeah. It's, I mean, it's very hard developmentally when you kind of become more of a product than a person to people and you become, you know, an icon in ways good and bad, but you, you become non-human to me. 
And I mean, I know for me, it was really hard in school, especially when I was young, young and despicable me was my thing. Cause instead of my peer group seeing me as, you know, a person, they'd be like, Oh, do the voice, do the voice, do the voice. Because they were all the age group for watching the film. Uh, so that was very hard from a young age to like, yeah, just be this thing. You're not <laughs> totally. Where, where are you at now in your relationship with acting? Do you, love it? Are you passionate about it? I mean, I, I do love it. You know, I go back and forth often, you know, I even had moments, especially after eighth grade where I was like, I never want to do this again. I'm going to quit. I'm so sick of it. And then like, I just, I always go back and forth and it's really hard to commit to how I feel, but you know, I feel very lucky because every time after I walk away from a project, I'm like, well, regardless of whatever, I'm so thankful for the experience I've gotten as an artist, as a person, the people I've gotten to meet. But, you know, again, it's, it's hard. I've done this my whole life and I feel very tied to it. And I feel like it's in some ways what's expected of me, but you know, there's absolutely other things I'd like to do. Like what? Well, you know, as I mentioned, I really like music. I would love to do music. Um, I mean, I've done a lot of writing. I, so I have a few scripts that I've been tinkering around, tinkering around with. Um, I like, I mean, I feel, I don't know, directing seems very daunting, but I feel like that would be fun. So a lot of entertainment focused things, because of course, but, uh, you know, I just, I want to try so much stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> why, did you, why did you consider walking away from acting after eighth grade specifically? Well, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't just eighth grade specifically because I've had that moment a lot. But uh, after eighth grade, I felt this enormous pressure to like, just to be great. You know, I, I didn't really, I'd been acting for a very long time, but I didn't actually know how to act well. Uh, and I, I mean, even during the eighth grade process, uh, that was a big learning experience for me, but, um, I feel like even then I still didn't exactly know how to channel everything I was doing. Um, and I got so anxious just after the whole thing. Cause I'm like, okay, wow, people know who I am now. And the next thing I have to do has to be even better. It has to be amazing. It has to be great because I have this, you know, people expect that from me, I guess, or else nothing's going to matter. I'm not relevant. I should die. <laughs> I always, that's always, it always comes back to that. <laughs> so then in your, what, what was your next role immediately following eighth grade? Yeah. So my, my next role was in the show Castle Rock and uh, I, that that was actually a massive, massive learning experience for me. Um, it was my first limited series. It was my first horror film, which was super fun. Uh, I never want to see fake blood ever again, though. It is horrible. Because uh, it, it's sugar. It's like sugar, so it's so sticky yeah. and terrible, and it stains. Anyways. Um, yeah, but, but that, so that was my next role, and I had done an entire year of press. I did January of 2018 to January of 2019 of press for eighth grade. Oh my God. Yeah. Cause we were at Sundance and then I ended up presenting at the 2019 Oscars, which was insane. Uh, but that was my life for a whole year. And I didn't have, I wasn't working on any other projects because I was just so busy um, with this movie. And then I didn't even audition for Castle Rock. I was offered that role. Uh, and that was very daunting to me because I'm like, well, did I earn this? Do I right. deserve this? Am yeah. I going to be able to, you know, compensate, I guess. Um, and yeah, I, I thought it was a great show. I really, I, I got to work with Lizzie Kaplan, by the way, who is a phenomenal actress and our season of the show, cause it's anthology was like a prequel to Stephen King's misery. So she played a younger Annie Wilkes and I was her daughter. Um, and that was, it was super cool. But, you know, the thing about the show is it really, it, it didn't get any recognition. Um, at least not like I 
personally think it should have because again, Lizzie was fantastic. Um, but even then I felt so much self doubt in my role. It was, uh, it was a limited series. So the episodes would come out weekly. And I just remember sweating so much before each episode came out. Cause I'm like, I don't even care if people are watching this. I just, we spent seven months shooting it and then immediately went to the premiere at Comic-Con 20, 2020 was it this year? No, 2019. Um, and I just like, I didn't know what to expect from myself. And I didn't know if I was actually good in it and not, it's a very, uh, you know, anxiety inducing thing to do a whole project like that and not just feel any sense of sureness in your, uh, abilities. But right <laughs> on the day, did you feel like you were able to channel the instincts you mentioned sort of in during eighth grade, not being mm-hmm. sure if you could channel those, those instincts that you had on command, I guess, in the future, what, did you feel like you were able to, and you kind of were more in touch with yourself as an actor at that point? I feel like coming away from that project, I'm now able to like be better in general and kind of channel those, you know, somewhat on command, I guess, but you know, you know, you know how acting is. It's not always like that, but, um, I know in the beginning I wasn't doing my best, I guess, you know, like I was trying my hardest, but I feel like it was always a struggle for me. Cause I could just never place like uh, what I had to do exactly. And like, you know, I don't know. The directors were wonderful on that. So I had a great experience working with like different styles of work. And again, coming out of it, I feel like I'm a better actor, but I know the process was just very doubtful for me. And I, yeah, (laughs) I keep going on and on, but uh, it's, it's hard looking back on this kind of stuff that caused me so much anxiety and being happy with the end project uh, end product. Um, but just knowing how uncertain I was throughout the whole process. But does it not give you confidence that you were maybe uncertain throughout and then you see it and you're like, Oh, well, I'm really happy with that. So maybe that self doubt was potentially unjustified. And, and in the future, I can just waltz in confident. <laughs> I don't know though. I, I mean, I feel like for me, at least, I think self-doubt is really important. Yes, it can it can really just take hold and like get you down sometimes. But how else are you gonna you know improve if you're not scared of being bad? Hmm. You know, I, I don't know. Maybe not scared of being bad, but you want. I think the root of self-doubt is this want to be better, because you're so unsure if you're there yet. And I feel like. For me, I always want to strive to be better. That's really smart and very compelling. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I think you can tell this is an issue I've struggled quite a bit with. So you find different ways to rationalize it, I guess. <laughs> hmm. I have this thing where I, I don't doubt my sort of the creative process, I guess. If I'm writing something hmm. or on the day, if I'm like directing actually feels really comfortable for me. I feel like, well, I know exactly what I want. I know exactly how I want it to look. I know exactly what I want the shots to be. I know exactly what I want the performances to be, but that's all process. As soon as the word career enters the equation, (laughs) forget about it. I'm unraveled because worrying about where the fuck my career is going to go. I don't know. And the pressure of like, well, what if I never make it as a writer director? That's what I want to do. And I quit acting. Was that the wrong fucking choice? Should I have not done that? That like, plagues me. That's where my, that's like mm. absolutely the root uh, of my anxiety is just this worry about the uncertainty of the future and what happens if I made the wrong choice and I shouldn't have quit mm. acting. I mean, I should have quit acting for my own mental health, truthfully, but <laughs> what if for like career wise, that was the wrong choice. Everybody, my whole family was like, what, how, you can't quit acting. You, why would you throw this away? You, why are you going to pursue this thing that you have no experience. And like, what are you thinking? But it just felt right. And now I am wondering if it was right because it felt right at the time. And now it's like, I'm caught up in kind of that whirlwind of self-doubt. That's where I'm at. I mean, I feel the same way. I'm kind of, I mean, I'm the before I make whatever leap. I'm still happy acting. It's steady, whatever. It's a living. Um, (laughs) But I, I completely sympathize or empathize rather with everything you've said, because 
it's just so hard, but you have to learn to trust your gut instinct. I think, you know, because life is so short, you got to do what makes you happy and you can't spend all this time, you know, mulling over whether it was the right career choice. Cause you're so right. It's, it's about like, it's about the process. About the That's one of, yeah. It's about the journey, not the destination. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh my God. But it's, it's, I think self-doubt is especially hard with acting because I enjoy the process when I'm like in the scene, but you also have to worry so much about external aspects you can't control. And that's something I'm always uh, very conscious of on projects, or at least now I try to be uh, because, you know, you get there, you shoot it, you do it your way, whatever. But then after that, it is all up to the editor and the director and whoever, and you have like, no control other you know unless you're producing i guess um and that's a very big thing to tackle because you can be in a scene and see it as this way you know and you think this is like the way it should be and that's what it was on set and Mm -hmm. then editing room it's completely different and that's very daunting to not be behind the scenes like that absolutely well sounds like it was strong point of view i'm excited to see what you wind up writing and and directing. (laughs) Oh, thank you. Yeah. I don't know. I just, I, I just, I have so much love for this industry and I want to hold myself to a very high standard, which is not always reasonable, almost never reasonable to hold yourself to, you know, uh, perfect standards. But that being said, because I love this industry so much, I, you know, I just take great care into the type of things I try to make and then it's hard when you can't you know have the control you want especially being my age (laughs) sure you've worked with incredible directors so I'm I imagine this might might not be your experience but I'm curious if you've ever had it had a had an incident where a director's giving you direction and you're like your gut instinct is very against what however they're wanting you to perform that scene and you're thinking like no I know it should be this other way but then you know you gotta as an actor you gotta listen to the director you gotta take the feedback and move on. Have you had that experience where you're like, your guts, your guts just going, no, that's not how I want to do it. No. Yeah. Oh my God. I mean, I obviously won't uh, name names, but uh, there's, there's been at least two instances where I've worked with people and I'm like, oh God, do you see this character as everything I hate about how people see them? Like, and I, I think part of it too, is if they're familiar with eighth grade, uh, they're, they're like, oh, this is like who you are as an actor. This is what you do. Uh, and then I'm trying to do a thing with the character and make it interesting and make it artistically is what I see good. And then we do this scene for sunset, whatever. And you're like, oh, like you just want me to do this stupid, you know, I don't know. I, like, uh, oh, I'm blanking on the word, but you know, like, a character instead of a person. And that's very hard. Uh, but honestly, a lot of the time, I gotta be honest, I just say fuck it and do what I want because I'm like, if they fire me, whatever, I'm 17, I'll go to high school. I don't care. <laughs> Good for you. Oh my God. I love I, that. I love being able to take advantage of the fact that I don't have to provide for myself. So I try, I try to, you know, uh, be artistic when I can and make bold and brash decisions. <laughs> That's great. I had, I mean, it doesn't count because it's sitcom, sitcom acting, which doesn't it's just, I completely disregard it. It's gosh, but we had this director <laughs> always wear this like great colored shirt. And he was the only director that I really struggled with for the show. Everybody else, like I adored, but he would come, he would come on that set. And I just be like, dear God, I know I almost accidentally said his name. <laughs> I know that he's going to want me to do out my lines like a fucking loony bin like just oh. set, swing open the door and like scream a line and i would like part of the my like deliver sarcastic delivery came from the fact that i was almost mocking how he was telling me to do the line i'd be like okay he wants me to do it that way i'll do it that way like <laughs> but just be sarcastic and um i'm glad i didn't slip and say his name <laughs> well, that's what the power of editing is for. Um, <laughs> by the way, I do think sitcom acting counts. 
I know you might think it doesn't, but it is a, it is a very uh, hard skill to master. Um, you think so? Interesting, because I feel like it's just, I feel like the rhythm of sitcoms is such that it doesn't even matter what words you're saying. If you open a sitcom door, like if you open the door on a set of a sitcom and you're like, it doesn't even matter what you said, that rhythm of will make people be like, ah! I mean, I guess, but I, I think there's a reason why some sitcoms hold such a special place in people's heart compared to other ones. And I, I think it's impossible, you know, if, I don't know. I, I just think there's like, you know, theater acting, film acting, TV acting. They're all like different skills. And yes, you can rely on like the setup, but I don't know. I, th- I think actors matter. I think actors matter. So that's my two cents. I think actors matter and we should die. So that, that's yeah, thing. and and we should die, as we all will. But that's okay. <laughs> we'll all get through until we won't. Yes, and then we will be consumed by the worms. <laughs> <laughs> when when in your life have you felt like a certain phase of your life have you felt the least self-doubt? Does, does a phase even come to mind? Yeah, I mean, honestly, I, I think right now I'm feeling a lot better than I have, which is awesome because, I don't know, there, there's something kind of freeing about quarantine. Like, yes, it sucks to see other people doing projects or whatever, but it's nice because no one's doing anything also. Uh, so we're all on the same level. I don't know. We're doing a very cool thing right now. I will say that. But you get what I mean. It sort of takes the pressure off in some ways. Yeah, I mean, I guess that goes back to comparing yourself with people. But there is something very nice about just, like, having some time to yourself and not being caught up in life and just, like, getting to do what you want for a minute. And I think I think when you're able to have time to work on what you're truly passionate about, that makes you doubt less what you might be worried, you know, about. <laughs> totally. No, that I think a hundred percent, if you're throwing yourself into something that you believe in wholeheartedly, you don't have that space for that, for the anxiety. Yeah, exactly. It's like, you just fill up all your time. So you have no time to be doubting. Yeah. That's, I got to make that note so that I can just not coping mechanisms. Off, right. <laughs> what are some things that you don't doubt? Like in general, if there are, let's say there are different categories for self-doubt. Mm. There's like career, there's relationships, there's. Yeah. 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 I mean, I think in some senses, I feel self-doubt about everything because again, anxiety, but um, I feel very secure in my relationships. I mean, I think that's not the case with a lot of people, but I've been very fortunate to surround myself with very you know, uh, cool people that I trust. And, uh, a lot of my friends right now, well, I guess everyone's friends right now, but a lot of my friends are online. Um, and they're just, they're lovely, lovely people. And I feel very lucky to know them. And, uh, it's very special to have security like that because I struggled with being lonely for a lot of my life. I was a social drifter and I guess it's part of being gone. (laughs) you know, from school all the time auditioning or whatever. But uh, it's very nice to just have people you can trust and they can often calm your self-doubt too. If you're like, oh, I feel really bad about this thing and it's not good, please look at it for me. And then to have people honestly be like, it's good, like you're okay, chill out. You said online friends. You mean you met these friends online or just you're communicating with them online, but they're older friends? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I've met most of them online, but I've also met a lot of them like in real life after the fact. Um, like I have my very good friend Clementine and we're actually going to go off to college together. So that'll be fun. You're, you're going to go to college? M- maybe. Sort of. Yes. I don't know. I'm, it's, that's another thing. It's very hard with acting to plan for big things like that because you could leave for two months like on a whim but i'm thinking of trying out community college and just living away from home for a bit 
seeing how that works out. And then if it feels like, okay, I can keep up with like going to school again, then real college. But also, what would I study? I'll figure it out. (laughs) You don't have any ideas for what you would want to study? I mean, I think getting a general education is important. Um, I'd probably like to study more creative stuff like writing, music, music theory, whatever. Um, I don't know. It's so funny, though, because I've never felt the want to study any sort of acting stuff. I feel like acting classes would make me want to (laughs) explode. Well, yeah, and I I feel like there's some people who... I I feel like there's some performers that are really more, like, theatrical, and then there's some performers that are really impulsive. Yeah. And it seems like, you know, or instinctual and, and, and it seems like school or like breaking down rules or something could be confusing for somebody who maybe is more instinctual. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, I do think it's very important to educate yourself on the different styles of whatever craft you're doing, uh, just to kind of, you know, learn the rules before you break the rules, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I just, you know, I, I went to one acting class my freshman year of high school, which was an experience because uh, it, it, it was a th- theater class. So different kind of acting than I do. Um, but I just feel like the idea of just doing all these exercises with people, not to diss anyone who does them. But like for me, I feel like that would just make me <laughs> doubt myself i don't know it would it's very awkward it's hard to like work with people on that level yeah. i yeah. just prefer to just get on set do it <laughs> nothing would make me doubt myself more than doing a trust fall yeah like, you're like, right okay what if the- a trust fall is gonna make you like i don't know do a scene about your dead dad better that's go for it go for it <laughs> let's act like a moose today i love getting to work with uh, English actors so I can like piss them off with my terrible accent and they're never actually mad because I'm so endearing and charming but <laughs> uh, but it's it's a great joy in life I want to hear about this uh, loneliness you said you struggled with some loneliness oh yeah loneliness I know all about it um, Ew. yeah <laughs> are, you, are you a social person you consider yourself shy Oh yeah, I'm extremely shy. I, I uh, like especially before I did any sort of press or whatever. I was a very, you know, socially inept person. I didn't know how to talk to people properly. Um, and then, kind of via exposure therapy, I learned how to, you know, put on a bit of a bravado better. Um, yeah, I've always considered myself kind of deeply lonely, which is not the best thing to say about you know, someone as young as me, but, um, yeah, I just, I've always felt ostracized from my peers, either by being like a gifted kid because I was reading, you know, college level books in fifth grade or whatever, which is not that uncommon. Um, or, you know, I, I've had mental illness for a very long time. I'm like 99% sure I struggled ADHD, but it's quite hard to get a diagnosis. Um, But so I've always had on top of that, you know, acting too and being away from peers just my age. Um, yeah, I've just always been like the weird kid, and I was proud of that identity for a long time. And don't get me wrong, I like who I am, I'm happy with who I am as a person, but I took a lot of pride in like being away from other people, especially my age. Um, and it's only recently that I've been able to like kind of come out of that shell a bit and be like, okay, maybe other people are cool. <laughs> Interesting. I had a similar experience where I felt very, I mean, I was homeschooled and I was more mm-hmm. than like, these things aren't going to lead to a lot of friends. Like that's just not the perfect formula for, for having a great social group. And I, I, there were there were a few exceptions, you know. I would maybe I would get like maybe really close with one person at a time, but then I actually remember I was twelve. I peaked at twelve, and it was the year where <laughs> I was like, "Okay, I'm gonna I, I'm gonna distance myself from people because I think in order to get good at what I do, I need I need to distance myself from people." And I felt a lot of pressure to be good at what I do because at that point I was 
uh, largely supporting, I was a main financial support for my family. So I was like, well, fuck, I need mm. to like keep, keep booking roles. And it happened. Like as soon as I kind of distanced myself and really stopped trying to fit in or, or, or stopped trying to socialize, because it always made me so uncomfortable anyway. And once I just kind of settled into the fact that I was like, okay, I guess I'm a little bit of a loner. I guess I'm a little bit of an outcast and I'll just own that. Then my career started getting better. And also I strangely felt, um, I felt more in touch with myself because I think I was just born kind of wanting more solitude and forcing myself to try and have these interactions actually made me feel kind of fake and inauthentic because I wasn't necessarily interacting with people that I had anything in common with in the first place. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I totally get that too. I mean, I've, for me personally, I've, I haven't worked on too many projects with people my age anyways, but once you kind of come to terms with your loneliness, uh, I think it makes you better as well. Okay. Sorry. That was a tangent. I wasn't fully. Yeah. I don't want to say it makes you better as a person, but it can make you more secure. But then I think it's the, you know, polar opposites effect or whatever the effects called, you know, science terms. Um, at that point, then people start kind of coming to you a bit more, which is very strange. Once you're a bit more confident in who you are, you start to attract people. And I think that's, that's very... Yeah, and then it's also, I feel like, tends to be people that are more in line with who you are as opposed yeah. to wedge yourself into like this thing that you thought that they would maybe want or something. Exactly, exactly. It's almost like once you're able to be yourself, people like you start <laughs> hanging out with you. Who would have known? Who could have ever known that? <laughs> you feel yourself. Do you, you do you feel really like in touch with yourself nowadays? And 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 is that part of maybe? Yeah. Parenting I life? mean, <laughs> I think I'm starting to figure out who I am a bit better. But you know, I'm I'm still young, so I don't have any. I don't know. I don't plan on keeping whatever this is for forever, unless this is just who I am for forever. Uh, but I, I think I'm able to be myself a bit more, especially when I can just calm the hell down. Because I just, I get this crazy anxiety and, you know, I've had it for so long now. I've had exposure to it, but I mean, like, I was just on a Zoom call with someone, like my palms were like crazy sweating beforehand. And then 30 seconds in, I'm like, okay, this is fine. And I mean, even with this, and you've been lovely, I just get this anxiety and like, just my body shuts down. But then we get into it and I'm fine. Interesting. Did you feel it going? You felt it going into this? Yeah. I mean, and it's like, it's not even that this is necessarily a daunting thing, even though I was sure. very excited. But um, I just, I feel it about everything. I mean, it's probably a deep issue I should tackle. But, uh, <laughs> but I mean, I, you know, I definitely have more than just social anxiety, which is fun. I know I'm 100% there yeah. with you. And honestly, like, you know, knowing, that this is coming up usually like a half an hour before I sit down to do one of these, I'm like, I'm nervous. I'm like, Oh my God. I mean, my hands are actually kind of still like, you know, that post sweaty where they're just like clammy and gross. Yes. Like, yes. That's where we're at. Now. Same group, same group. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, that's exactly, I was feeling that like going in or it's, and it happens every fucking time. And I'm at this point, I've done dozens of these and I'm like, yeah. when does it end? When does it go away? Or like I had this live show that I would get so uh, nervous ahead of time that there was one time when I had an actual panic attack to the point where I was um, backstage before going out to do the show and my hands were clenched. Like I, I got so much anxiety that my hands tightened into little balls and they feel like I can't move them. Like I can't open up my hands because they're so tightened. Oh my and God. Yeah. Like, oh, I can go out there. I don't know if I'm going to go out there, but of course a bunch of people paid for tickets. I have to go out there. I don't have a choice. The show's starting. It's like three minutes after I'm like, we got to go. And then I go out and, you know, it turned out really well. And it was the, the day that I had a panic attack was actually one of my favorite performances, but the, the process of getting into it, I'm like, I don't know. I got to figure out a way to manage this back because this is not healthy. Like this is not yeah. good. What do I do? I don't know. I'm, I'm curious if there are any strategies that you have or that you use. Is it like, I'm assuming some sort of positive self-talk, which I try and it's like, okay, well, my positive self-talk is talking to my negative self-talk. So how do we get them on the same page? And right. 
<laughs> like, I know it's so hard because your internal monologue can ju- just take over and, you know, you can try to make it positive, but it's just kind of a stream of consciousness. Uh, yeah. For me, I, I do best when I can distract myself. Like, you know, we have, we have these stupid phones everywhere. So I just go on Twitter before whatever, you know, if I have to do a stage Q and a or go on some show and just like get out of my head, you know? And I, th- I think that's uh, important because it's good to be your authentic self, especially when you can do something cool and personal like this, but it's harder. It's hard to like let that vulnerability through. Uh, so sometimes it's great to, you know, build up this alter ego, even if it's not an actual alter ego, just like the show you who goes up and like, Oh, you're doing a bit. You don't, you're not nervous because you're doing a bit. Mm. That's my thing. I don't know. I'm, I'm interested. Like you've clearly done a lot of live stuff. Like, are there any tips you have? (laughs) No, or just our coping mechanism. I don't know. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything that worked for me. (laughs) The I mean, last, the last few shows that I did, I got <laughs> massages beforehand and that helped uh, somewhat. I think people ignore how physical anxiety is. So I'm glad to hear that because getting something that can actually calm your body is very smart. I actually, this is not healthy, not recommended uh, and whatever. I used to not eat before I did anything live. I mean, I've always, I, for the most part, for most of my life, I've had a very small appetite, which has strangely changed lately. I've been eating like a monster. It's insane. Uh, <laughs> but I, for, for most of the press I did for eighth grade and stuff, because I was just going in front of people all the time and it was super anxiety inducing. I like wouldn't eat on any days I was working and it wasn't a body image thing or anything like that. It was literally, I just felt like I would flush myself, uh, in front of people. I, I literally, I thought I was going to shit my pants in front of people. So, uh, I just chugged water and didn't eat and that I don't recommend it, but I do think it's a great example of how physical stuff can be. I had eating disorders for 13 years, so I'm going to stay, steer clear of, the, of not eating. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just for the sake of, just for the sake of that. But so, okay. So you mentioned body image and that it wasn't a body image issue. So do you feel like you've always had pretty healthy body image? Do you feel like you've had kind of a good relationship with your, with your body and appearance? Uh, I mean, uh, sort of, I don't know. I mean, I, I've, uh, going back to it, I've always been like, as I've said, the weird kid, the different. So I didn't, I didn't care to, you know, use makeup for forever. I didn't want to look like any of the other kids because I was me and that was cool. And you know what? I was right. But, uh, another part of acting, especially when you maybe don't fit what society sees as like, you know, a suitable kid for TV or whatever is that kind of, you know, it develops. You, you start to think, well, oh, am I not getting roles because I look weird? Is that a thing? Like, you know, and I got acne very young and I didn't, I didn't really know how to use makeup. So I didn't cover up. And I like, I, I went to an audition once actually, like right before eighth grade when my acne was at its peak. And my headshot was from a few months prior where like I, I had a much clearer face and I went into the audition and I handed my headshot. they like, oh, you don't have acne in this. And like, they said that to like little 13 year old me. And it's like, it's kind of acceptable in the industry to be like that. And that's terrible. And so I've, you know, I haven't really had self image issues, but it's hard because there's an immense pressure to conform when working in the entertainment industry. And that uh, can spiral into many different, you know, lanes of thought. I, you know, I think, I think as a kid, I think people undermine kids. That was also a thing about eighth grade and Beanie Feldstein forever ago. She actually did an essay. Um, and she was like, I didn't know I was brave until people said I was because she was talking about being like, you know, um, a more plus size actress. And I kind of went through the same thing. I was like, oh, I didn't know I was brave for having acne until people told me I was, I, 
I know eighth grade has been really helpful for kids who look like me, normal kids who struggle with that. But it's also, I'm still a kid and it's kind of harmful to be like, oh, you're really brave for being weird and aside from the norm. And I'm like, okay, can I just be myself? I don't, I don't want to be seen as an act of rebellion. You know, I'm just me. Wow. I want to read that article from her. That's such a. Yeah. Yeah. It's so good. I think it, I think it was for teen Vogue. I could be really wrong. I, if I find it though, I will link you. It's she's, she's amazing. And the article was great. So that's great. Have you guys worked together before? Um, no, we haven't worked together. Uh, I've only met her once in real life, um, which was very cool. She was, uh, receiving an award in Santa Barbara for book smart, uh, cause Santa Barbara film festival is one I very much like. So I went last year or this year, God. Um, yeah, but she's just lovely and she's an icon and a very, very cool person. <laughs> Do you feel any self-doubt towards your music now that you're trying to, would you say transition or not necessarily transition, but just incorporate? Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. I, I get what you mean. Um, yeah, of course. Uh, I, it's very hard too, because I'm not, I don't necessarily have a ton of musical connections. So it's not, it's not something I have a ton of people to like talk to about or like exchange songs, I guess. I don't know, but I, I've done a few projects in the past. Like I had this little, little Dungeons and Dragons podcast forever ago that was very short lived, but I did a ton of music for that and I was really happy with it. And the podcast itself wasn't like crazy successful because it was very terribly made by me, but uh, the people really like the music I put out and I, I have some really, really old stuff on Spotify and oh. I didn't know what I was doing, but I had a lot of fun. And since then I've been able to kind of build up my skill and I'm getting to a better point where I actually understand what I'm doing. But yeah, yeah, I doubt of course, especially because I haven't put out anything yet, not anything serious. So going along with this expectation about acting, I feel like in general, both I and sort of society have set a high expectation for anything I put out, which I'm trying to break free of as best as I can and just kind of do whatever. But that's, uh, it's, it's an enormous pressure. Mm. No, <laughs> even with something so silly. Absolutely. So, so you, so it sort of bleeds into the music. So you even feel like, oh, well, whatever you put out in any regard has to be up to a certain standard because that's what people know you as, and that's the the expectation. Yeah, and I, I've, I mean, of course, I'm like, uh, I, I don't think actually people are going to hold me to an enormous standard. I feel like, especially at, like, I'm still young. I'm doing whatever. People are going to be forgiving with whatever I end up doing. But um, I don't know. It's it's hard because regardless of what you do, you can feel like you're disappointing people. And that's hard to deal with. It's hard to come down from a big high yeah. or, or to like, sorry to interrupt, but to like um, to be ignorant of your own ability is something I'm very afraid of. I never want to like think I've made something really, really good and then have people listen to it and then be like, Oh, they think this is bad, and I'm also really stupid, and I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> oh my god, I so relate to that fear. It's like it's terrifying and unsettling to feel like, oh fuck, Ed, do I just think this is good because I'm so in it and I'm so used to it, and I'm just like caught up in this in the whirlwind of it, and maybe I can't see it clearly. I can't see the forest for the trees. I can't zoom out enough. That's like that's I think a very real fear, and sometimes. Well, and I definitely feel that without having, mm, in some ways, I'm grateful for not having external validation while I've just been like plugging away, writing and directing my own stuff and not sharing a lot of it online. I shared a few things, but not much because it's like, I just wanted to have those projects that I could learn and grow from. Mm. But in some ways, so in some ways it's not, it's been helpful to not have constant feedback, but in some ways it is like, well, I'm working in a vacuum and yeah. without having that external validation how do you know how something is and how will you know how, if something resonates or not and where something lands. And I think it's, it's tricky to find that balance of how, how long do you let yourself learn and grow and kind of like marinate before mm. sharing things and how much do you listen to the external feedback 
whose external feedback do you listen to? That's been like a lifelong right. because it's like I started out listening to my mom's external feedback. Should never listen to that because she <laughs> <laughs> oh should have disregarded that. I ah oh, I relate to that so much, and it's you know don't get me wrong. There's something very beautiful and personal about being able to work on something on your own and just have it like be your thing, regardless of what anyone else thinks. Um. But external feedback is so important just to like, you know, your own confidence about whatever you're doing. And it's, it's, it's so hard not to listen to it once it's been said. Also, I mean, you talk, you just said, you know, who, whose feedback do you listen to? But it's so hard not to listen to all of it, even if you don't respect the people saying it or their opinions. It's like, once it's in the air, it's there. I've heard it. Oh God, it's the bane of my existence. <laughs> So. <laughs> so true. You can be like, I don't like what that thing. I don't like what that person is. I don't even know the person, whatever, but it still kind of infiltrates for whatever reason or can. Yeah, it can. I mean, okay. like you can have someone with terrible taste being like, oh, this is awful. And it's like, well, you thought like, you know, ratatouille was bad. So shut up. <laughs> I feel you. All right. Well, we're out of time, but I just have one little wrap up question and then I'll. Leave you to your day. Leave it to oh, your night. You lovely person. Do you have any advice for somebody who might be struggling with self-doubt now, aka probably everyone? <laughs> um, any advice on some steps that they might take to kind of gain some confidence or just to, to deal with the self-doubt? Because sometimes you can't necessarily get rid of it. It might just be there, but mm. something they can do. Yeah, I mean, I would say, and of course, Whatever I say is not the end all be all because I'm still struggling with it daily. But I like to try and romanticize the things that I don't like about whatever or whatever I'm doubting, I guess. You know, if I'm like, oh, you know, I wish my life had been different so that I could like have different circumstances and feel more confident in like what I'm doing. I try to like read back my autobiography to myself from the future and think about how an older me would describe that and you know it makes it better for me i don't know because i think about how i reflect on my past mistakes and you know i've i have had a lot of mistakes i'm also not that old yet i don't think so at least um but i try to look at it through rose tinted glasses although that's not always the best decision but to have a little bit of forgiveness for yourself and be like you were learning and we all make mistakes and just feel some love for yourself i think it makes going forward easier because you can take that ideology and you can take how you think about who you used to be and then view it through the lens of who you're gonna be and kind of live that way i'm not saying ignore any faults you have of course but we all make mistakes self-doubt is going to be there no matter what so it's okay to like move forward with a little bit of confidence like well regardless i'm gonna love myself in the future so it's okay i love that and i can personally take i, I personally will take that advice or will try to because i really struggle <laughs> with self-forgiveness that's like mm. One of my biggest my biggest struggles is that I'll just beat myself up so up so much for things that I couldn't have even necessarily controlled from my past, and I'm just like I regret that so much or that mistake that I made or whatever. And uh, and it's really nice to like think of think of it through through the rose colored future self looking back <laughs> with the shades on the hat. It's <laughs> yeah, I get I get it. That's great. Um, yeah. I, oh, go ahead. Oh no, no, I don't know. I was just gonna say. Um, it's hard advice to take because I still struggle with it, but I don't know. End all be all is love yourself. Dog. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Uh, thank you so much for coming on. I have so much respect for you and your talent. I uh, best, and I really appreciate you taking the time. Oh, thank you so much for having me. You're lovely and wonderful and also very talented. And I was very excited for this and it was amazing. So thank you. <laughs> so good. Bye. Bye.